Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at a different front end for Retrobyte called a track mode. Now the default being emulation station, but you can change that. And a track mode is largely geared for arcade setups, maybe custom builds. But you can see here as it fires up, it's quite different from emulation station. And a key difference is that it's quite easy and quick to set up uh, live videos. Obviously you can put um, your pre-recorded intro or general overview of a particular game and get it playing just like this. So you can see by default it's fired up into this thing and I've got Gallagher chosen under a main directory and it's playing the video. So I'll just scroll through this so you can get to, uh, to see the interface and what sort of options there are and I'll run through the different configuration um, choices you've got. And then from scratch we'll build RetroPy 3.6 and put this a track mode on top so you can see the steps involved in replacing or running alongside emulation station because you don't have to get rid of that interface this is just a different option that you can boot into instead so you can see as I scroll down you've got the the wheel on the right if you like so it scrolls through the different names of the games and in this particular demo all I've done really is copy a set of ROMs across so it's not the full suite it's just really for demonstration purposes as I scroll down you can see all the different images on that wheelbar they are obviously separate uh, PNG files they're separate images that you can import in, they're quite easy to get hold of, I'll run through that in a minute. And also you can see on this one for example, on that arcade machine on the left, you've also got the marquee appearing at the top, so it says Gallagher 88 at the top of the arcade uh, machine as well. So you've got three, at the moment on this particular layout theme, you've got three custom images. You've got the, the name of the game on the right, Gallagher 88. At the top of the arcade machine you've got Gallagher 88's marquee and then you've got the video playing. And alternatively, you don't have to have a video playing if you haven't got one available. Um, or you can't download one, you can put a static image in there as well and the system will automatically sort of scan through if there's a video to play that, if it can't find that, it'll play your static image and we can see, um, see where the folder, folder pass for all that is set up. And one thing I mentioned as well, if you've got Emulation Station and maybe you've scraped a lot for that and you've got a load of images, it's, it's a lot cleaner um, from what I've seen so far just to keep all those images as is. Don't try and use those for this purpose. Separately create some folders and put images or videos dedicated to a track mode in those. I scroll down to the more you can see, oh, the arcade, um, when you see that appear. And then also you've got the video static on the left to try and sort of emulate that. But the arcade just means I, for that particular game I haven't got the image. And because I've just dragged a load of ROMs across here, um, I haven't got, um, for example, well I have got a lot of clones and you wouldn't want those in there necessarily, it's just the same game repeated in a lot of instances, maybe a different uh, language or region. So um, this is quite untidy as it stands but you can obviously tweak to your heart's content and there is a lot of configuration options you can run through on this if you need to. So that's why some are just blank because uh, I haven't got an image for that particular version. But you can see at the bottom and the way I've set this up at the moment the text, um, uh, the file name of the game is at the bottom, so this is Gallagher MW. MW must be some variant of the main one. Or actually, given that's got an image, it might be the main parent ROM. Anyway, okay, so other oh, arcades, Galaxian. And it looks pretty good when it's got the marquee complete as well there, so I've got the image for that marquee as well as uh, the video, etc. So it helps if you can sort of curate your. Um, ROM collection to make sure that you've got either just the games you want or you've got the images to show where you want it. Um, that's optional uh, rocket pointer on the right, you can change that to not appear as well so you don't have to have that marker pointed but you know it's it's really visual and as the name suggests attract mode and gets the attention of somebody uh, who might see this setup particularly on a custom build and like I said I think it lends itself more to an arcade setup. Um, not just because this theme shows you an arcade machine, but it's just the sort of thing that used to run on the traditional arcade. You get a rolling demo and uh, you know you could see what the game was like before you tried it. So it's a good way, scrolling through here, of seeing that. Um, I don't know, I know in Emulation Station there's quite a bit of um, screen area taken up by a description of the game as well, which is quite useful, but that, in most of the themes here that doesn't tend to appear. Um, you can scrape a lot of this information rather than putting the images there manually as well. But at the moment uh, it's what, the 10th of April? 
um, 2016, and there's quite an issue with um, a key scraper database called the Games Database, and because that isn't up at the moment, I'm not going to go into too much depth about the scraping solution, just where you can put your files when you've got them, or when the scraper's back up, how to use it. Okay. So I'll shut up a bit and I'll just scroll through and you can see what this looks like. Okay, so you get the idea, as I scroll through it just uh, fires up the relevant media assets, shows it on the screen, and depending on the theme, which is easy to change, you can uh, jump between them all. And also, um, I've, I've set this demo up with a couple of systems, so this is main, obviously, and if I press the right button on my joystick, and I set the controls up here, which again is pretty easy, I'll show you how to do that when you build it. Uh, if I scroll to the right, you should see another system. There we go, so I've got Mega Drive. Now, it's a bit harder to get some of the graphics in Mega Drive, particularly the marquee, because obviously it's not really something that would typically be associated with a um, console game, you wouldn't get marquees, but somebody has, well there's been a lot of work to get the, the wheel images, so there's quite a lot on the right there, you've got the right images. Quite a lot of the videos appear, so they're there, but it's just really the marquee. You could always change the theme where one where marquees aren't so prominent, but um, it still looks pretty good with the, the wheel image there. What else have we got? Uh, Space Harrier. Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. And uh, one of the benefits of the track mode is it's got quite a, quite a lively community. There's quite a lot of development going on. The forums are quite active. There's a lot of different themes. And there's a lot of help available. There's quite a few threads about the Raspberry Pi generally. So there is quite a lot of help available for implementing and, and customising the attract mode solution. And quite often, particularly as this is kind of geared maybe more to the arcade games and therefore custom builds, I think there's probably just as much configuration that you could and time you could spend putting into configuring the front end, the attract mode side, as there is with the actual hardware side, because there are so many options that you might want to tweak and, and customise and get exactly um, right for your particular solution. So it's it's um, quite different to Emulation Station in that respect. Quite often, Emulation Station, you're just use it as is. You won't really configure very much, and what configuration there is is fairly limited. So it's great for getting up and running quickly. But um, if you want more granular configuration facilities, this is probably not a bad choice. Now, if I've found there's a couple of bugs, if I do certain things with certain controllers in a certain way, it, it tends to bomb out a bit or freeze, but not to the point where it's not usable, and not even to the point where I wouldn't use it on a live project. It's just maybe um, there still needs to be some refinements made. And I am building it from scratch. I'm not using like a pre canned image with an older version, I'm using quite a current version, so maybe. Um, because it's still under development, you might get the odd hiccup, but it's it's not that prominent. Um, okay, so you've seen the systems in here. We've got the the Mega Drive here. No video for that one. Um, and then if I scroll to the right with my joypad, I get the next system, etc. Um, you've seen that it uses the images, and it's useful. It's pretty well geared for a decent arcade front end. I have had some issues using my keyboard when I've um, booted this attract mode straight in, like you saw, it boots from scratch into attract mode. For whatever reason, I'm having trouble getting the keyboard working. If I just 
um, go to the command line or go into emulation station to the command line and then start the trap mode the keyboard seems fine no problems at all but um, it's probably something I'm doing a bit wrong anyway um, yeah so settings I've mapped a button on the joypad if I press select and you can see these are the main settings within that that was my phone sorry about that um, okay so these are the settings in a track mode and you can see you've got various options to um, tweak and I'll just run down these um, briefly now and then we'll go in more depth when we actually build this and configure it so emulators are where you've got the um, individual sets of emulators to run the games whether that's RetroArch or a custom emulator and that's where RetroPie really helps because you don't have to worry about installing or configuring these that's already done with RetroPie all we've got to do here really is point to the path where it's installed so if we go in there um, the only two I've really configured most of these are just set as default when a track mode is installed but if you go to this one for example I can see at the top that's the text name I've given it that's the executable um, path with RetroPie to run RetroArch. Here is the command arguments and we'll, we'll type through that in a minute and I'll show you how that works. Show the ROM paths, that's the standard ROM path for RetroPie, just type that in. And then down here you put the paths to the graphics. Now I don't use flyers, that's why I haven't changed that one there and it looks wrong. The videos, actually the videos is a custom one I put, that's not used, it's just these two here. So you've got snaps which is where I put the videos and if you haven't got a video you can put a static picture in there and a path for wheel and you can see because it's under the ROMs directory it's easy to put these files across to the Pi in the same way you normally would with a ROM so it's just a, a subdirectory of the ROM directory but you could put that wherever you want I've just chosen to put it there because it means that I could access it with the standard Samba shares that you might copy your ROMs across with or I could use FTP in the same way I copy my ROMs across with so it's just convenient really but you can put that wherever. Um, so yeah, that's the options you get under each given emulator. And if I go into uh, the main one I've put, it's really similar because I've chosen to use RetroArch for both of these. It means that my controls are always set up in the same way. And by using the same path, the same setup that RetroPie is using, you're hooking into those configuration files that already exist, so you're not replicating anything and you're just running on the back of that which again means if you choose emulation station to fire up after it's not going to have a whole different set of configuration um, it just uses exactly the same files ROM pass, uh, ROM extensions, I think that's default anyway and then I've got some pass for the marquee, snaps, wheel etc that's, what, that's what's down there um, and then when you've done that I hit generate collection ROM list and it fires up a um, XML feed for a, um, um, a track mode to read and it appears but we'll run through that in a minute so that's the emulators displays that's probably one of the main areas of this whole system in displays I've created or you create a display really for each system that seems to be the way that it's geared so I've got a display for MAME and if I go in there I can see that the name for it is MAME the layout or theme that that's sort of interchangeable really if someone says layout it's a theme theme is layout it's there and you can copy new ones across that aren't necessarily with the installation so I'm using RoboSpin which didn't come installed but it's really easy to copy across and I'll show you that uh, collection ROM list so I'm using in this display the ROM list from the main emulator so if I could select that I could probably yeah I could choose in this one I could have the Mega Drive games instead but that would be weird so there main uh, show in cycle so that's when I do left and right and for each of these boxes although I'm sort of describing it it's got a perfectly good help feature at the bottom there so it tells you what it does so the cycle is when I scroll left and right through it will be included in that list uh, show in menu some filters so you can just show particular ROMs or hide particular ROMs and it's quite it's quite powerful as well you, if you don't want to do it in the GUI here you can edit it in a text editor and there's a lot of uh, granular tweaking that you can do to make sure you just get the ROMs that you want to see it's quite powerful you can filter on all sorts like manufacturer um, ROM name uh, various filters in there uh, and then each 
layer or theme has got a load of options for it. So if I go in there, for this one I'm using RoboSpin, I could change the background image, I could change the spin wheel from wheel to use a marquee images instead, but I want the wheel. Um, I could have a CRT effect on the uh, videos that play, which I've got turned on. Um, random text colours for the name of the games, marquee. We can see you can just run through there and change quite a lot if you want. Controls. Okay, so controls you can see here for the up, down, and uh, up, down, and select are the main ones here I'm using. And you can have as many buttons, excuse me, as many buttons mapped to each function as you want. So if I press enter, or if my keyboard is working at the moment, I press enter, and it will say press another button. And we'll do that in a minute when I uh, do it from scratch. So you can use your joypad to configure it really easily. And there's a lot of other buttons that aren't even mapped that you could put a shortcut to. Loads of them, but I haven't really mucked about with those. Okay, sound. Well, that's just assigning sounds to particular functions. I haven't done that. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Screensaver. That's just when it kicks in, you get like multiple videos. So uh, what's it got here? Movie collage, yes. So it fires up the movies if you don't touch it for a while and um, shows them all. Scraper. Now, Scraper at the moment, as I said, could have issues because the game's DB isn't playing ball. So... I'll avoid that one for the minute. And then just general ones, you know, do you want to hide brackets in the title? Do you want to be allow somebody to exit from this environment? Etc. etc. Okay, but yeah, the main thing is really um I think it's a it's a great visual solution for um running this on a on an arcade setup. And I think to be honest, I'd probably use this as something like the uh, the PyCade, I've got a separate video on the build of the PyCade using Emulation Station as the front end, but I think this attract mode as a front end instead would um, probably look better, it looks more suitable for it. And yeah, it will look much better if uh, you spend a bit of time sorting the ROMs out. So take the clones out, take the ones out that you're not going to play, and, and maybe if you want it more complete, either hunt down any missing videos that aren't available. Or, um, or set it up as you want to see it. But one thing, if I forget to mention later, I'll try and put it in the comments, but all of these as image assets, like the videos and the marquees and the wheel images are either from Emu Movies or Hyperspin site. So I've got everything from there. And they're both really good at um, offering all of those images. Okay. That was an accident, but probably quite useful. Um, I just pressed load the game, and you can see there it's loaded. Well done. And again, because I've got this running as a RetroArch based emulator rather than a specific custom one, all my keys were already mapped because I did that in the first beat of running Emulation Station. Okay, you probably don't want to watch me play Gauntlet. So to quit out of this, just as you normally would, it's hold down select, tap start, and we get back to the main screen. And let's try that one. That might take a bit longer to load. That's Gary Mark of the Wills, so that's about 80 megs, so might take a minute to fire up. got a shader running on this so there's a bit of a scanline effect showing. Oh. 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 Oh.
Yeah, it runs pretty well. Anyway, let's try one more with a funny um, resolution to make sure that the... Well, not resolution, but aspect ratio to make sure that's loading okay. I think Gunbird's a good example. Uh, Okay, where is it? There we go. Okay, Gumba. Yeah, that's okay. And yeah, so get distracted there. It works and uh, it's really visually impressive. Um, I'd recommend checking it out. What we'll do now is I'll restart and I'll have a clean RetroPie 3.6 install. It'll have rebooted to so resize the hard disk. But that's all it's going to have done, so we'll build it from scratch. Uh, it take uh, On a Raspberry Pi 3, it only takes about 20 minutes to build the whole thing, but it's probably um, a fair bit longer on a 2 or a 1, so you, know, you want to leave yourself some time, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'll quit this, and I can do that, press Y, exit, track mode, yes, okay, I'm back to the prompts. Anyway, um... okay, here we are in emulation station, uh, it's first boot, so it's detected the joypad that I've put in. I've got an iBuffalo USB pad put in here. So it's um, it's happy to see that. It's a standard USB one really, there's nothing particularly special about it. And the advantage here of configuring it in Emulation Station first is that RetroPie will create a few controller files for us so a track mode doesn't need to worry about it so much. We don't need to bother reconfiguring separately. So if I um, hold the button down here and create this in the same way as normal, I just press the buttons prompted, up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left, right. Then skip the rest. OK, press A on OK, and it'll take us into emulation station as normal. So that's the, the default setup. But we don't need to do any more here, and that's created the controller files for us. You can create them manually after if you want, um, it's nothing stopping you doing that, it's just convenient to get uh, Emulation Station or that process of firing into Emulation Station to create them for you. So what we'll do now, we're going to drop into the command line and you can either do this with a keyboard attached to the Pi on your TV or monitor directly or you could remotely SSH in with something like Putty. So if I press start and quit and quit Emulation Station, really quit takes us back to the command prompt and that's where we can start using um, the process to, to install a track mode. And I'll just change the view here so it's a bit clearer. Okay, at the command line, the first thing we're going to do is just uh, make sure all of the um, components are up to date. I've just found that if I try building this um, straight away, that it's missing a few files or they're slightly updated. So just doing the standard update process. If you type sudo apt-get-update, 
first, that shouldn't take very long. Obviously, you do need to be connected to the internet here, so your Pi needs to either have an ethernet cable in or your Wi-Fi needs to be live. Uh, if you don't have it connected, this whole process won't work, so make sure that's set up. And we'll just run through. Now, some of these processes, they don't take very long at all. If they're a bit longer, I'll sort of jump through the video, I'll sort of pause it, but in between that, I'm just waiting. I'm not interacting with it at all, so it shouldn't matter. There we go, that first one's done. And then we're gonna upgrade, so sudo apt. Now, this doesn't upgrade RetroPie in any way. It's just the, the sort of components of it. So we're not updating the script or the binaries or anything like that. Uh, sudo apt get upgrade. And this one takes slightly longer, and what we should see quite early on, there we go, it confirms, uh, do we want to continue, press yes, enter. So just uh, make sure that you're aware of, uh, it's gonna take a little bit more disk space, um, and just want some approval there. So you run through that, wait a moment for that to finish, which shouldn't take too long. And after that, we start building a track mode. Okay, so that took about three or four minutes. I'm on a Pi 3, um, so it might take a little longer depending on what you're using, but it didn't take uh, that long really. Now what we're gonna do is make a little area to install, build, configure the attract mode um, front end. And what we'll do, we'll do that from the home directory. So we are in the home directory at the moment, but just to confirm, you can always type CD and that tilde sign and you're back in uh, home Pi. Now all I'm doing here is running through the existing wiki that is on the attract mode um, GitHub site. So it's fairly well um, defined, it's pretty clear, and I'll just run through here so you can see it working. I'm not doing anything different to what's on there really, it's just running through and installing as described. So first thing we do, we make a directory, and this could be largely anything, but we call it develop, keep in line with what the wiki is saying. So you make that directory, and you can see now you've got a new directory here called develop. And first, what we're going to do is install the dependencies that a track mode relies on. So it's quite a lot of um, applications, and the command looks quite long and lengthy in itself, but you can just copy and paste it from the wiki, which I'll put a link to in the description. Okay, so that's what we're going to install. And um, it shouldn't take too long, but I'll probably pause it and then say after how long that's taken. Okay, so the first thing it does say is, are you sure you want to go ahead? So it's saying 44 meg, okay. Go with that and uh, just run through and uh, update those or install those. Right, well that didn't even take a minute, so that one's not long at all. Uh, next we're gonna download and build SFML, which is, um, it's kind of graphics library, I think. It kind of deals with drawing the windows and writing to the windows. So essentially it's something that a track mode needs. So if we install that, what we're going to do is change directory to the one we just created, so develop. Then we're going to clone a piece of code that they've done, which I'll copy and paste again from the wiki. So it should look like that. Press enter there. This shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Okay, that's that bit done. And we're gonna create a couple more directories. That's that, and now we're gonna make it. Now this one might take a bit longer. Let's see how long that takes. Again, if I pause it, I'll say how long that was at the end. So paste that make command, and it'll run through, again, bits it needs to do. That was quicker than I remember it. Anyway, uh, no, sorry, yes. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna... Yeah, I think this is the longer bit. Okay, so it gives you an indication on the side there how long it's gonna take. Um, so you know whether to grab a cup of tea or not. This one looks like it's gonna whip through fairly quickly. Again, this isn't a track mode, this is just um, some, well, SFML, the part of the 
graphics library it's going to need me use to um, I guess draw the images on uh, the interface it's not exciting video so I'll pause this and we'll see it at the end okay that finished and took about three minutes something like that not too long um, okay next command we're gonna do run LD Comfy, which I, yeah, there we go, done. Right, now we're going to build a track mode. So, we just make sure we're in the right directory. Uh, move back to the develop one, there we go. And we're going to clone uh, the track mode repo here. So, again, if you copy that there, shouldn't take too long. There we go, that's that done. We're going to change into the track directory. So, now we are in. HomePy developer tracks. Make use, guys, okay, one, I think it's something to do with images again. Uh, graphics. Not sure how long this one, this one might take a bit longer. So, again, I'll pause that now and see how long it does take. Okay, so that's run through and basically compiled, built, and a track made. That took about 10 minutes on a Pi 3. So, uh, could well take longer on a different model but um, that's that's all done and following through from the uh, wiki the next bit is to run this command which uh, is much quicker done and because RetroPy doesn't come with a X environment or like a GUI to um, fire into and a track made needs that you've got to install that separately so that's with this command here we're going to install that this one shouldn't take too long I don't think Okay, it says, do we want to continue? Say yes. And that's it, you're done. That last bit took about 30 seconds or so. And that's all installed. You could run it now. Um, but first, whilst we're in the command line interface, I'll just show you a couple of useful areas to be aware of. So, um, if you don't know, all the ROMs, they're stored in the home directory. Uh, RetroPy ROMs in here so that's where we'll be putting uh, some ROMs and I'll copy some across in a minute and I'm going to do it for the Mega Drive and for MAME and I'm going to choose MAME LibRetro now MAME is obviously the arcade emulator or an arcade emulator and it's a bit different from the consoles in that the ROMs have to be quite specific and this video isn't going to cover that side of things. If you want to know more about MAME, check out the RetroPie Wiki. It's got lots of really good details on exactly what version will work with what ROM set and how to check these and all of that. But I'll be using MAME or LibRetro version of MAME 2003, which uh, I think it's 0 0.078 is the ROM set for it. And I've already got that set, so I'll just copy those across in a bit. And I'll do the same for the Mega Drive and we'll check um, how that looks. Separately, the folders that have been created are, well there's two of them. If I go back to the home directory, the first one, if I type ls space hyphen lah, you can see here there is, uh, I was gonna say there is a config directory, but it probably created when I run a track mode for the first time, so it's not there yet. Uh, there will be one there, and when I run it, um, in there you can put things like themes and manually configure uh, some files so that's where you'll see it, it'll be dot um, attract I think it's called. Um, separately um, I don't think this is going to let me check all the way, if you go to cd forward slash usr forward slash uh, local it is, and share in there you can see there's an attract folder now and in the attract folder, oh, spell it right. You can see um, you've got the configuration files for it, and the layout slash themes folder, and everything else. But there will be some slight permission differences here. Well, you might be able to see actually if I type that. You can see it's got uh, roots the owner with the group staff. So if I tried copying or creating a file. Um, via FTP here it would say I need to change the permissions and you could do that you could change permissions here to edit this but above here when we do run a track mode for the first time uh, you'll see it creates um, a hidden config directory here which you do have permissions for and it's got um, the layouts folder in there and if you put a theme 
in there, it works fine. Well, layout in there, it works fine. So it's um, a track mode we'll look in here and here. So what I'm saying is there are files here, but you probably don't need to worry about them. Use the one that will appear here when you run a track mode. That's that. Okay, so another thing I want to show you is if you go to CD OPT RetroPie configs in here, because um, we're using RetroPie to give us a bit of a head start in configuring a track mode because a track mode is just a front end, it's not an emulator, it's not, well, it's, it's very similar to Emulation Station, it just presents you with the data. And because of that, you still need the emulator, so we may as well use the whole emulator structure that RetroPie sets up. Now, for example, I'm going to run a Mega Drive um, game, run a Mega Drive game, run the Mega Drive emulator. And if we go in the config directory here of Mega Drive, so change directory to Mega Drive, in here um, we'll be running effectively this RetroArch CFG. But you can see how RetroPie would run it by looking at the commands in emulators.cfg, and you can do the same for any um, of these emulators. It gets you a really good clear command line that you can pass to a track mode, and that's what we're going to need. So if you read emulators.cfg in the system you want to emulate, so type nano emulator CFG, I can see in here that the default, not that it's that relevant for a track mode, but the default is LR Pika Drive. Now I want to run in a track mode this emulator, LR hyphen Genesis plus GX. So I can see to run that, I just need to type in this path here, apt retropy emulators retroarch bin retroarch. So that's the executable. I'll put that in the executable section. And everything after that, I'll put in the argument section. So the arguments are what you pass, the, the data that you pass, the actual binary, the executable. So I'll just type that in after. And that's where you can find it. So you don't have to work out what the particular commands are. They're already here for you, really. Um, you just have to do a very small tweak. Typically, the only thing you have to change, if I go to the end of that line here, where it's got percent ROM, because of the way this is structured, it's just got a quote at the end here and right at the start. Um, for consoles or any ROMs that have got spaces in, you just put a quote around um, this ROM. I'll show you when we configure a track mode, but um, that's the only difference. You just need to put a quote around it both there and you don't use the existing quotes. But it's a lot clearer when I type it. Anyway, uh, and that's that really. So what I'll do now is fire up a track mode. Now you can do it manually or you can also do it, um, you can tell the RetroPie setup to do that automatically and to, if you want to do it automatically, like I said when I have done that before the keyboard seems to play up a bit but it could be me doing something a bit wrong there. Um, you just type sudo nano and we're going to edit this file and this file is something that's run on boot up and there are probably different ways of doing it, probably better ways of doing it but what you can do is remove the word emulation station here and you can replace it with, <coughs> excuse me, so if you delete that, you can replace it with X in it, attract, and then that will be into a track mode. But I'm not going to do that for the minute because I want to make sure my keyboard's fully working for the, for the next test. So if I quit out of that, I'm just going to run this manually, and all you need to do is type X in it, as we just did, attract, press enter, and it should fire up into um, a track mode. Uh, I'll do that on the main screen so it, it fires up directly there, but uh, we'll boot into that now. Okay, so run that with X in it a track. This is the first boot. Let's see how that goes in. Okay, so prompts for language. Uh, using the keyboard there, hit enter on English. And that's it. Um, this is the first screen you get um, because nothing's been configured. We'll run through and configure that. But what I want to do is just quickly see whether that uh, configuration file um, directory has been created. So I'm going to hit um, back. Ooh. Hit back. And we should. Uh, actually, that's what you'll get presented with if you don't configure anything, a black screen. So I think if I press tab. Yeah. OK, so we get back in here. Um, and I just want to work out where quit is then. I think it's escape. So escape, escape. There we go. Exit track mode. Yes. Okay. Now, whilst we're in this view, I'm just going to see if that directory has been created. There we go. So we've got dot attract. 
Now, if I go into that directory, you can see I've got all my folders, as we saw earlier, and I'm going to put a theme into that layout one. Right, so I'm just going to FTP across in the background there um, into so get that directory up. Okay, so in the attract one, in the layouts folder, I've downloaded, and I'll put it in the comment or the description where you can download particular themes. It's called Robo Spin, and I'll copy that one across. So they're pretty small themes as well. They don't need a lot of uh, lot of graphics. So in there now, if I list that, you can see I've got my Robo Spin, and in there. Uh, the files. So now if I boot back into uh, a track mode, we should be able to choose that particular theme. So X in it, attract. Okay, here we are. Now let's get uh, the configuration up. So there's nothing configured at the moment really at all. It's um, straight out the box really. So what we'll do is configure the Mega Drive section first and in the Mega Drive folder, the normal ROMs folder, um, uh, maybe I'd, I'll show you that as well um, just so you can see everything that's going on in the background there. I've just copied across the Mega Drive ROMs, that's all, so I'll press exit and I'll show you here. Change directory, um, so we go to the home directory and here we go RetroPie, ROMs, Mega Drive and if I list that you can see at well, you've got the blue folders, you've got the snaps and the wheel. So I've just copied a load of ROMs beginning with S across, and I've got snaps for either the video file or a static image, and I've got wheel for those images that you scroll through on the wheel. And um, again, I've got all of those images from either Emu Movies or Hyperspin, and they've got tools, there's various tools about, um, in fact, one was called Fat Match. That one's really good at getting uh, ROMs to match the images, so to make sure the file name's the same. That's the important thing, to make sure that the, the file names match, basically. But um, with MAME, it's a lot easier because you know that the ROM set is gonna be called something specific. It's more about when you get the, the console ROM sets where you've got a lot of different um, naming conventions. It could the, the ROMs could differ from your images. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, when you get your images, make sure that they're named the same. So I've done that in the snaps directory and wheels. So for example, if I go into the snaps, you can see that I've got a load of video files that have got the same file name as my ROMs, so it can find it. And similarly for the wheel, if I go in there, there's a load of images. But uh, the other directory that we've done, or the other system that we've done, uh, if I go back here, is name hyphen lib retro. And in there, you've got a set of ROMs. I just picked a load beginning with G. Um, but it is important that you match uh, this ROM set with what you're going to run. And, and the command that we saw earlier was specific. And when you'll see in a minute, it's specific to main 2003 or the Libretro version. So you'll need that. And then you can see again, the blue folders, you've got the flyer folder. And at the end there, you've got marquee, uh, snaps and wheel. The only reason the Neo Geo zips in there so you can run ROMs that rely on that uh, Neo Geo BIOS. And that's where we'll be pointing these files. So you can see here a key directory, home pie, retro pie, ROMs, main live retro. Okay, so back to X in it, run a track mode. Now at the moment, my joypad uh, doesn't work because I haven't configured it. Um, so let's do that first. Let's go up to controls. And the key ones really are up, down, and select and uh, exit I think. So up is already configured to be up on the keyboard. If I press enter there, I'm gonna not remove the existing one, I'm gonna add another one, so two different function keys, <coughs> or two different inputs will go up. Press enter, press up on my joypad, and now you can see that it's detected. All right, I pressed on joy zero, the up button. Um, I've done that back, and I'll do down, and I'll add another input, press down on the joypad, that's done, back, so now you can see either I can press up or up on the, actually that's working now, so I'm doing that on my joypad and I want it to select. Um, I will add input and press B because that's what I want you to do for select. 
And I suppose, yeah, left and right previous to spare map. So we'll add an input left. And for right, we will add input right. And I want back, 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 back. There we go, exit confirm. I'll add input and I'll have Y. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to use this a bit more. And you could do other buttons. You could, um, I think it's got page up, page down as well. Yeah, there we go. So I could um, have page up as add input shoulder button back and I could have page down as the other shoulder button. Oh, and the other really useful one actually that you should do is the um, configure to get back to this menu. So it's tab on the keyboard, but I will add an input. So it's select on my joypad. Okay, and that should set me up really. So I've got um, better configuration now. And we're setting emulator up. So by default, these are the ones that's configured. None of them are going to work because they don't know that we've put this on RetroPie, so the paths aren't going to be right. Um, what I do is edit the existing main one because it's easier for main, but for the Mega Drive one, I'd add an E1, so let's run through that. Uh, add emulator. Okay, emulator name. Um, it's Genesis plus GX, so let's go. You could put anything here, it's just a marker really. Genesis plus GX. Okay, uh, press enter. And here we go, so it's, it's giving you um, an emulator um, section for the one you've just created. And for each menu item you choose, you get a little help test text at the bottom. So let's do this in order. The first one is executable, the program you're going to run. Now I want to try and make this as easy as possible, so I'm going to use RetroArch as often as possible. And the executable for that is, if I select that there, I've got to type in the path, which should be, uh, if I just separate this out a bit, uh, don't need that. Okay, so let's type, right, forward slash, so we're just going to do the path, apt, retropy, and uh, it's in the emulators folder, and you, um, you laters and retroarch and I think that's in the bin yeah bin directory and retroarch so there we go so it knows to run this it needs to run retroarch which is that path there enter next one down is command argument so what are we going to pass to retroarch so this one's quite hefty that's quite useful that run file name we'll need that at the end so maybe if I just skip that uh, because as you can see the help desk at the bottom says that the run file name is like a variable and it will just populate the um, at that point it will enter the whole path including the file name of the game that you're selecting at the moment and um, obviously we will need that but the rest of the arguments we also need is first it's hyphen l to i think that loads the uh, lib retro library um yeah the lib retro call anyway hyphen l uh, forward slash apt retro pi uh, retro pi lib retro cause you only have to do this once so it's a bit of faff to start with but once you've done it you're away okay apt retro pi lib retro cause forward slash lr hyphen genesis hyphen plus uh, LR hyphen genesis hyphen plus hyphen GX. Okay, hyphen GX. Uh, forward slash genesis. I should have just done Pika Drive. Genesis underscore plus underscore GX underscore lib retro dot so and then we're going to pass it the config file that we usually use in retropy which is hyphen hyphen config say so we're going to pass it a config file uh, forward slash apt forward slash retropy forward slash configs forward slash mega drive forward slash retro arch dot cfg and then a space because then you've got the wrong file name at the end. 
And that's all you have to do, put the quotes around that variable. I think that is it. So press enter there. And it's got these command arguments. Okay, run pass. So that's where we put the games. And you've got a variable there, dollar home, which will go to home pi, but just for clarity, I'm gonna type it out anyway. So it will be home pi retro pi uh, ROMs and Mega Drive. That's it. Uh, the extension now my uh, ROMs are actually dot uh, gen, so that won't work for me. Um, multiple extensions can be entered if se separated with a semicolon. So I could put semicolon on mine, but because I'm only going to use these anyway, I can just type gen. So that's that. System identifier. Uh, what are my options here? I'm not sure. The system identifier for multiple values. I think I could just put Mega Drive and then that's what it finds. Let me try that. Mega Drive. Okay. Uh, source scraper. Well, the gamesdb.net is playing up, so I'm not going to scrape at the minute. Additional input files. Don't need that. Exit hotkey. Don't need that. Flyers, they're not going to be relevant for this one. Marquee, it's not going to be relevant for Mega Drive. Snap, that is relevant. So what we'll do under Snap is change the artwork path. You can put multiple again there. It's separated by semicolon if you want. Um, okay, so I'll put home, pi, retropi, roms, Mega Drive, and snap. Is it snap or snaps? Uh, snaps. Okay, so that should find those. Okay, back. And the wheel was the other one. So we need to artwork path for that, which is again home, pi, retro pi, uh, ROMs, Mega Drive, and uh, it should just be wheel. There we go, right, back. Uh, I think that's all you have to, now I don't know whether this is required, the ROM list, but I'll run that anyway, it doesn't take very long, because I think the display uses that to display rather than just look directly. So we'll try that one. It wrote 99 entries to the ROM list. Okay, that's pretty quick. Uh, okay, so if I go back, and I can see now, if I go into displays, I've got my Genesis Plus GX entry. If I go back, and if I go back again, it should. Okay. So it's found, um, obviously, the video. You can see one running there. It's got the default theme chosen. And what we do, we change the theme because we have the other one that I prefer. Um, but it's quick and easy to change between them. And at the moment, if I press left and right, I'm not going to be able to scroll to a different um, system because I've only configured one to appear in this list. So I'll press select to get back to configure. I'm going to choose displays. And on my Genesis display, it's got uh, the layout. Yeah, sorry, I was just thinking about something there. Okay, so Genesis Plus GX, so in there, in the display, which is added because we've done that emulator, um, we can change under layout, instead of a track man, I'll have Rover Spin. And press back, and back again. And there we go. We're back to the view we had. And uh, to make sure it works, I'll give it a quick run to make sure those paths we put in were correct. Uh, if we try Shinobi. Looks good. And it's detected my joypad because we've connected to the standard RetroArch setup.
Uh, yeah, so there we go. And if I hold select and start, quit back. Okay, so that's that one now. Press select again because we map that to the config. Uh, we can go in emulators and we will set up the main one, which is really similar. Okay, so I'll just edit the main entry. Uh, emulator name, emulator name, name, executable. Okay, so this is where we get the path for uh, running the, again, it's just RetroArch again, so that is very similar. Um, in fact, it's the same. Okay, so executable is forward slash apt retropy uh, emulators if you do get an issue running this, just double check the pass because it's easy to make a mistake. Op retrofy emulators forward slash uh, retroarch forward slash bin forward slash retro arch. Okay. Uh, command arguments. Okay, command arguments are hyphen L as before. And we're going to go apt retropy. Um, bah, 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 bah. Lib retro, lib retro calls, and that's we're going to use lr hyphen main 2003 forward slash main 2003 underscore lib retro lib retro dot sa. Okay, I think that's right. Uh, Liberatory cause forward slash LR hyphen main 2003 forward slash main 2003 underscore Liberatory.so. Yeah, then we're going to pass the config file, so hyphen hyphen config, and that is apt retro pi uh, configs main hyphen Liberatory in retro forward slash retro arch dot cfg okay then we pass the name of the ROM and this is where um, you can use one of the variables so we've got ROM file name we should do it down there so oh, oh, quite. there we go right so square brackets ROM file no square brackets and quote and quote Okay, uh, enter. ROM paths. So these ROMs are in, again, the same sort of place. Home, pi, no, home, pi, retropy, ROMs, forward slash, main, hyphen, lib retro. Uh, ROM extensions, yeah, mine's a dot zip, that's fine. System identifier, arcade. It's not 100% on that identifier. Maybe it's um, used for scraping. Anyway, uh, list X and I don't need these. So, flyer. Okay, you might want to skip this. This is going to be me typing the same path about four times.
Okay, so now that uh, emulator should know where to find its media assets. Um, add artwork. No, I don't need any more. Um, generate one list. Run that. That's done. Added 279 inches. Not going to scrape because there's an issue with the scraper. The, the scraper really would be if you wanted to grab these images directly or, you know, the marquee files, etc. But I've done this manually because I've downloaded um, these from either Emu Movies or um, Hyperspin. Uh, okay, back. So now we should have two ends of displays. We've got the two systems that we've uh, configured. So if I choose main, um, it's already chosen that I want the Robospin layout. So if I go back and back, there's the Mega Drive. Now if I press left, it's loaded arcade. There we go. As you can see, we've got the, actually that's a bad example, uh, that one, you've got the marquee at the top, you've got the video, and you've got the wheel text. Let's make sure one of these work okay. Let's try Gallagher. Okay, the aspect ratio is a bit skewy here, and I'll show you how to fix that. If I quit out of that, and in the background, I should be able to fix that. Um, but, 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 give me a second. Just that. All I'm doing is going into um, the config directory of RetroPy, and in there, I'm going to name hyphen the retro, and in the retroarch.cfg at the top of that file, I'm just putting aspect underscore ratio underscore index equals 20. And if I save that, I'm hoping. Now, if I run that again, there we go, it's better. When it says OK to continue, you can just um, tap left and right on the joypad and it skips it. Or you can build, I think you can build this instead of using the default binary, you can build it without the request for OK, but uh, up to you. OK, there we go. All very playable. There we go. Um, okay, so if you've got any queries about uh, MAME and getting MAME to run, don't um, put them in the comments on this particular video. You're much better off in the forums um, because it can be a bit more involved but better yet check out the wiki because it does explain it all there but this as I said before this is just getting a track mode to work now if you've got um, configuration queries about uh, either the RetroPie integration or a track mode you're um, best off on the forums or wiki for each of those systems either the RetroPie um, wiki or forums and um, they've got a new website uh, so do check out that new forum they've got up and running uh, it's really helpful. Separately, you've got the Attract Mode Forum, which um, has got a lot of details about configuration files, themes, layouts, uh, controls, all sorts. Um, so you can get support there. But if you've got, you know, just a quick question about um, the setup here or anything that's been covered here, put it in the comments on the YouTube video and I'll get back to you. Um, but uh, for the more sort of lengthy queries, uh, do put that on a forum. Okay, so that's largely it, I think. That's how to configure. Um, and get up from scratch this setup. Um, one thing which I think I showed earlier is how to get this to um, automatically start in a track mode and that's by editing that file that's um, on boot up. So I could show you that now again. I'll just quit out of this, um, which I can do with the controller. It says exit, so yes. Okay, so go back to the command prompt there and command we want to run is edit a, a text file, so sudo nano and the one we're looking for is in the etc directory profile and it's uh, profile.d 10 hyphen English. Like I say there could well be a better way of doing this but all you need to do there is change that for x init attract Control X, say yes, you want to save, enter, and that's done. So now that would boot into a track mode instead. 
Or alternatively, if you wanted to go back into Emulation Station, all you've got to do is type Emulation Station, and that will go back, and it'll see your ROMs in the same place you've put them. So um, both can kind of work hand in hand. You don't have to have one or the other. But hopefully that's covered um, most of the queries that you'd have about this. I'll put in the description links to um, the Attract Mode forum and Emu Movies and Hyperspin where you can download those graphics that I've used in this example. But uh, it should get you up and running. Hopefully that's been some help. Thanks for watching.